My name's Pavel Barber. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. And I'm a hockey skills coach and a hockey social media influencer. I played in the outdoor rinks all throughout my life. I would go before school, I would skip school, uh, I would go after school, I would do whatever I could to get on those rinks. This rink is a two minute walk from my house, so it was basically like having a backyard rink. I think when I was age 14 to 19, I was here like probably five times a week, even with hockey. I just love how it's, it's just like the best form of freedom for me. I think uh, just being outside in general is a lot of fun, but just having the, the cool air in your face, especially when it's winter, it's nice and crisp out there. You're breathing in fresh air, you're playing hockey, you're getting a great workout. And every time I go home from a training session, I'm super happy, you know, I'm very uh, excited for the day and it's a good kind of uh, way to wake up and uh, start your day. Backhands, baby. <laughs> As a kid, I played for the North York Knights double-A team. I stayed on that team till my minor hockey was pretty much done. I played there for eight years. Looking back on it, no regrets on not moving up. And for me, it was definitely hard as a small guy to get recognized. And I'd go to tryouts and you're almost you know, told, yeah, you're not gonna be on this team kind of thing. Because back then, it was a little bit different uh, for that stuff, but had a great time. I'd gotten scouted by this guy who was the coach of Team Ontario to try out for that and eventually after two years of trying out made the Canadian team and as I was in Vancouver uh, training for field hockey that's when I got a job at an arena to work at the UBC University of British Columbia uh, hockey school and from then that evolved into me like shooting videos while I had the ice time to myself for free. So I'd put my uh, phone on a milk crate and just shoot, uh, shoot myself doing uh, shootout moves on my buddy. And that's the first ever YouTube video we filmed. There was definitely a shortage of the, the stick handling content online. I was the kid who would scour YouTube for hockey dangles and try and learn from them. And uh, when I would type in how to, like for example, how to do the Datsuk move, there was nothing out there to do it. And I'd have people ask me how to do it at the start because they knew I loved trying new moves and stuff. And I remember being 18 in the Provincials and I was on a shootout and I did the dad suit move and scored and I felt amazing. Hey guys, it's Pavel Barber here with another shootout tutorial for you. Today it's all about everyone's favorite move, the dad suit move. All right guys, so here's the dad suit move. So he goes in with a pretty decent pace, comes right down the middle, all right? He just stick handles very, very simply, looking at the goalie. Now, right around the hash mark area, this is where he begins his move. So what he's trying to do is fake like he's shooting to that far side right there. All right, so he's just faking to shoot to either that bottom corner or that top corner, anywhere on that side. And what he's trying to do is get the goalie to slide over and play that shot. Okay, so around this area, this is the fake. This is what he's faking, that shot there. Where this move begins is all with his edge work. So if you're a right hand shot, you're gonna be using your right foot, the inside edge to make this move work. Okay, so as you fake the shot, 
that's when you begin to angle this skate. Now what that does is it allows you to get the leverage to pull that puck when you fake to shoot it to this side. And with the goalie sliding all the way over that, if you sell that well enough, then the goalie's not going to be able to recover in time. I'll look at eight-year-olds today and they're doing it flawlessly. Like they look exactly like Datsuk. And that's just from, you know, breakdowns and looking at what, what is he doing? What's he doing with the, uh, the hands? And what's he doing with the edge work? And once you key in those pieces and you break it down in stages, it's easy for the kids to learn. And that's what I love about the online presence of, of YouTube. I'm able to assist kids through, you know, breaking the skill down so it's not this big like, oh my God, I don't even know what he did. It's like, well, here's what he did. Here's the stages and take it as a progression one, one step at a time. I hope you guys enjoyed that shootout tutorial. Uh, for next week, we're gonna be studying a little bit of an innovation to the Datsik move, the Linus Omark move. I know all of you guys have seen it. Uh, when Linus Omark played for uh, Sweden, he used this move, flipped it up over the goalie's shoulder, went bar down, it went viral, it was ridiculous. And Datsuk actually paid homage to him later when he did it against Niemi. So what that move is, I'll just uh, kind of introduce it to you now and then we'll go more in depth into it later, is he makes it obvious, he tries to make it obvious like he's gonna do the Datsuk move to pull him over to that side. So what he does is, what we were talking about earlier, is not selling the, the shot very well to get the goalie to fall on this side. So he fakes that shot not well, pulls him over, flips it over him. All right, so we'll study that more in depth next week. See you later. Daily, I'll, I'll spend a lot of time on like small area cutback moves and stuff. So I'll pretend I'm in like a small corner, just trying to keep the head up, changing direction, making switchback moves, and then always leading into a shot at the end of the drill. So pretending like you have a defender on you and you have pass options available, always looking like you're ready to pass or shoot. And at the end of the drill, you just take a shot on net, make it fun. One of the big things is I train myself. Like I'll go out to a hockey stick and puck and stick handle and uh, just go out and work on my own hands and my own craft because I feel like if I'm not doing that personally, I'm not able to help other people as much. The more I can understand the skill deeply, the better I can assist them when something's going wrong in their skill set, the quicker I can identify a weakness in their abilities. And I just love it. It's a good form of exercise for me as well. As you're stick handling around, you never want to lose functionality in your stick handling. So if it comes close to my feet, I lose functionality. I'm not able to shoot or pass or stick handle. And same thing when I'm too far out, right? I lose that functionality. So we want to teach these kids, be functional. The entire time you're stick handling, trying to keep the head up, okay, soft hands. So in between any of your stick handles, say you have a pass or shot that opens up, you'd be able to shoot at any point uh, in the uh, stick handling there. When I was a kid, it was a little bit different. I was a bit less focused on that because I wasn't teaching anyone. I was just out there to learn more and have fun. But now I'm more about like, how can I do this more efficiently? How can I create space and be more deceptive so I can pass that on to everyone I work with? Skill level of these players going up. A lot of these players are getting a lot of YouTube videos, looking at those Instagram videos, seeing them, and they're coming to the ice and they're trying these moves out. You know, they're trying them in one-on-one -on -one situations against their buddies. They're on the outdoor rinks alone trying these moves. The amount of training and the accessibility of training uh, and the availability of information, you know, so much. I think those three things combined made these kids just so incredibly good at hockey now. That's the evolution of hockey, each generation better than the last, right? You think of, you know, Gretzky, and then you think of like Crosby, then you think of McDavid. Like each generation will get better because they're learning from each other.
If you guys haven't heard of Floorball, you got to try it out. It's pretty much the ultimate off-ice training aid. I had the pleasure of working at the Gretzky Hockey School with the off-ice program, teaching these kids floorball. They loved it. I love this sport. There's a whole lot of cool stuff that you can do with this stick. So if you haven't played it, check it out. I'm going to show you what it's all about. Let's go. So I started playing floorball for Team Canada in 2016. The first tournament I went to was in Riga, Latvia, the uh, World Floorball Championships. 2018 was uh, Prague, and then we'll be going to one at the end of this year in, uh, in Finland, in Helsinki, for the 2020 World Floorball Championships. The rules are, are quite different, so there's no offsides, there's no icing. Uh, if the ball is above your knees, you can't play the ball with your stick, you have to use your body. The stick checks are not allowed, so you're not allowed to stick lift or come over the stick, you have to get the ball first. And when you see the players playing and why the rules are structured that way, and the number of people enrolled, you see why, because there's no need for helmet, gloves, you're literally in your jersey, shorts, shoes, and a stick. And that's all you need to play floorball. It's a fast-paced, fun game. And anyone who wants to watch uh, a floorball game, just look up Finland versus Sweden. It's, it's a fun version of uh, hockey to me. <laughs> The YouTube thing I've been investing quite a bit. I bought a brand new Sony camera and the, the quality's picked up and I don't know what it was but something hit me where I was like I, I want to grow this more. I got really really motivated so I just spent like I think it was like four grand on camera equipment and lighting and, and stuff like that uh, and sound and uh, I was just like I want to go go harder at this and, and make it better because it, it had been a bit stagnant for a while because I was focusing so much on just my personal camps and stuff but I, I realized like I really do love this side side job the whole content creation and I want to give my viewers a better product every year like grow it year by year so um, you know you got to do the uh, make the investment in order to, to grow it so I did that this this winter. What's up guys, Pavel Barber here and today we're going to be teaching you how to do the impossible Zorro. That's that move where we start between the legs and we pick it up and we fake to shoot it there and then we rip it behind our backs there. So follow this tutorial and you'll be a legend. Let's get started. So the key to a fake slap shot, you do everything you normally do on a slap shot. You want to hit a little bit behind the puck, but you want to make sure you're very quick right when you hit the puck to get off and around the other side. The most common mistake people will make is they'll spend too much time on the puck and the puck will shoot off. What I'm working towards in the future now is creating online courses to be able to help more people uh, with stick handling and just the game of hockey in general. I want to keep growing my, my camps. I love being able to actually work with these kids in person and then work with more NHL players. That's always a, a fun thing. You know, I've worked with Jake Vertan and I've worked with Jonathan Taves and when you're around these guys, like it's awesome because you know the mentality these guys have, you know, the passion these guys have, like you see it, you feel it when they're going like they won't stop doing a drill until they've done it correctly. You don't have to tell them. Yeah, Taves had reached out to me through just Instagram direct message asking for uh, something to do three to five times a week, kind of a program. So I put something together for him at the start and uh, got to uh, meet him in person and train him in person last, I believe it was last summer. So we got on the ice and we did some off-ice sessions together as well. So it's great to hear from a guy like that too who, who wants to be better, even though he's obviously an elite player. Elite players know you can always be better and for him he's a very driven guy who's like, you know, desperately trying to, to get better at any, any chance he can. So um, yeah, I was, I was pretty pumped to work with him. 
it's a fun thing for me and it's a very challenging thing for me using Jonathan Taves as an example like finding ways to to make that guy better who's already a very good player is a challenging you know thing for me but I know it's something I can do there's always a way to improve and it's my job to find that and I love that I love that aspect of training because we have the technology now it's just they send me video and I give them my my breakdown or my suggestions so it's uh, and then I watch them in games and I'm able to see it live so it's cool if a guy scores a goal and we talk over DM he's like uh, like Charlie Coyle the, the other day, he had done a, a move on a breakaway where he fakes uh, to shoot, he waves over the puck, he goes backhand, forehand, and I posted it and he, he messages me, he's like, I hope you know I learned that from you. And I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> pretty cool, cool moment. I, I had no idea, like, I had, I had sent him a video on that technique, but the way he did it, it was just like, it looked like he knew how to do it already. He was so good at it, so. Yeah, uh, little messages like that, just, and anything that, that helps these guys, even if it's not like doesn't relate to uh, or translate to a goal right away. You know, as, as long as it gets them thinking, um, that's a success for me. It's uh, it's cool to have, you know, that potential impact on these guys. Yeah, time flies when you're out here, though. Good thing they got a clock. <laughs> Take time. All right, top left here. When you're on the ODR, you can be as free as you want, as creative as you want, and it's a great place to work on your creativity and skills that you're, you won't learn in the team environment, which I thought was one of the biggest benefits to me as a player growing up, is I knew how to do moves other people couldn't because I spent the time, I invested the time into uh, trying those moves and really learning those moves, and that was all done on the outdoor rink. So it would be very accurate to say I would not be doing what I'm doing today if outdoor ranks did not exist. It's funny, when I was probably like five to seven years old, I had dreams of making the NHL, but I mean, after eight years old, I was just like, I love this sport, I just wanna play it and get better at it, but no real aspirations to go pro or anything like that. I love just being active and pushing myself. When I'm playing hockey, I, I think I'm in the moment far more. There's nothing on my mind. I think it's so important to have that love, enjoyment, creative, free side of your training. And I think it's always worth revisiting, whether you're five years old, whether you're 20, 30 years old, getting on the outdoor rink, having fun, trying moves you wouldn't use in a game, things like that, and just laughing and having a good time. Ready? Hup, hup. Oh, 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 oh. I always tell people if I wasn't doing this for a living, I honestly don't know what I would be doing. Oh! Oh my God! Broke my ankles. To be able to help kids at hockey and play hockey as a day to day and learn the game for a living and pass that learning on to kids, it's the best job in the world. Can you do it two in a row? Like two in a row? Let's do it. <laughs> Clockwork. <laughs>